Hey guys. All right. I hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, which means we are getting started with some more science. Last week we talked about um, how electrical currents flow. This week we're talking about how energy can change. All right. So by the end of the week, you should know how energy changes forms and you're going to know how electricity changes to light and gives off heat. The words to know for this week is just one filament and we're gonna talk about that towards the end of the lesson. This week's lesson is pretty short again, so it's only going to be just one video, but I am going to go ahead and put this video on today, Monday, and I'm gonna put it um, on either Wednesday or Thursday this week as well as a quick review video for you. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so energy changing forms. We already know that there's a ton of different forms of energy because we've already talked about a lot of them, right? We've talked about electricity, light energy, sound energy, the energy of motion, heat energy, all different types of energy that we've already discussed. So the cool thing about energy is that it can never be lost and it can't be made or destroyed. So we can't just run out of energy and say, all right, well, I'm just gonna run down to the factory over here. I'm gonna just make some more energy real quick. No, all the energy that can and ever will exist already exists. It can't be lost and it can't be made and it cannot be destroyed. However, it can be transformed. What does transformed mean? What is transformed is just a fancy word for what? Yeah, transform is just a fancy way to say that energy can change forms. So let's talk about solar panels and wind turbines and how they can transform energy. So we've got solar panels. What are solar panels used for? Solar panels absorb what? Yeah, solar panels absorb that sunlight from the sun yes and then they change it into once that solar energy is absorbed by the solar panels that energy is transformed and it can be used for electricity heat um it runs machines it can heat you, you know run your house people some people have them on their roofs disney world actually has an entire field full of solar panels that they use to run a lot of some of the things at their park. So that's pretty neat. And then look at the background of this picture. These are wind turbines or windmills. So the wind turbines or windmills harvest that wind energy. And as these rotators, as these um, turn and rotate, it generates electricity so that wind energy is being transformed into electrical energy which then can be turned around to as light energy heat energy sound energy any type of way that you can use energy they can use and generate from the wind energy transform it and then use it for something else so those are two really neat alternative energy um, sources that we are using as opposed to like fossil fuels like we've talked um, about in weeks past. So some more examples, a lamp transforms electrical energy into light energy. Lamps are plugged in for the most part and when you flip that switch or you turn it and that electrical energy that's flowing through the cord now is light energy because that light bulb lights up. And then we've got guitar strings. So this might not even be something that you would think of automatically as being energy that's transformed. But you got to think if you pluck a guitar string, your motion that you're using to pluck the guitar strings is then being transformed into what kind of energy do you witness when you pluck a guitar string? Sound energy, right? Right. So when you pluck that guitar string, your motion is being transformed into sound energy. So I know that's not an example we think of right off the bat when we think of energy transforming, but it still is an example. All right, light from electricity. TVs, computers, light bulbs, all of that use electricity. I'm using electricity right now on my laptop with the lights on in my room, all of it electricity. 
these objects are resistors, which remember we talked about resistors last week. Resistors are just anything that transforms energy and uses it as something else. So these objects are acting as the resistors in a circuit. Most resistors transform electrical energy to light and heat. Most do, not all, most. The filament in an incandescent light bulb is a resistor, okay? So here's that word filament that we need to know for the week. A filament is just a thin coiled wire that can get very hot without melting. So most light bulbs, unless you've got um, an LED bulb, most light bulbs are incandescent light bulbs. And if you look inside of them, you can see the, um, here it is right here. You can see the wires on the inside. And that's an incandescent light bulb. And that filament, that is that wire that you see on the inside. And most of the energy is transformed into heat, but that filament becomes so hot that that's what glows and gives off that light. So that's pretty neat, right? To know that, that it's actually just getting, what's giving off the light is that the coil is getting so hot. So I don't know if you've ever touched a light bulb, hopefully not very many times, but if you've ever touched a light bulb after it's just been on or while it's still on, it's a little bit warm. That's because that electrical energy that was coming through that cord transformed or changed into that heat energy in that filament. And then that got so hot, it gave off light. So that's pretty neat, right? All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about for the week and for today is heat from electricity. So when electrical current passes through a resistor, it often gives off heat, just like we talked about the last slide with the filament in a light bulb. That's why electrical wires can become hot sometimes. Now, most of electrical wires have, um, I'm gonna pull a wire up over here. Most electrical wires have a, a good insulator on the outside. Remember we talked about insulators last week. Insulators um, kind of hinder that electrical flow. So this protects us from those wires on the inside, This the insulators on the outside of the cords, but the wires on the inside do become hot. So some types of wires make really good resistors. Many appliances have coils of these resistors or of these wires. More wires allows for the appliance to become hotter. So some get so hot that they glow red like a toaster. Okay, so hair dryers have a lot of these coils. Why do you think hair dryers would have to have a lot of these coils or these resistors in them? Right, hair dryers have to get hot, right? To dry your hair or warm yourself up or dry a spot on your shirt or something. So Hair dryers have a lot of those coils in them so that it can create more heat to get hotter. And same thing with toasters. These coils, these resistors on the inside heat up to cook your toast, right? To cook your bread and make it toasty. I love toast. All right, sorry, random bit of information from Ms. Stevenson. All right, guys, that is it for today. Please make sure that even though this is the lesson for this week, I am going to post it on another day this week. So make sure that you're checking your folders daily for those um, assignments in your science folders. All right, guys, you have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging with me today for science and I'll see you next time.